You know what, everyone? I think we should give a round of applause. A round of applause to the Philadelphia Flyers. Because you know what? They did the unthinkable, folks. They did the unthinkable. Not just losing 10 straight games. Not just losing 10 straight games once in a season. Losing 10 straight games twice. They did it twice, and what makes this worse and funnier is that we all said they were most likely going to lose another 10 straight with the way they were playing because of how bad they were and the teams they were playing and the schedule they had and just because of how bad of a team they are. They did it, folks. They proved us right once again, and it cannot be any more funny. <laughs> but before... We get into all of the nonsense. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. And before we get into this Flyers' 10th straight loss to the Columbus Blue Jackets, the most important thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. I will greatly appreciate that. So if you are a new viewer looking for all the latest Philadelphia sports news recaps and events, this is the place to be. It's always a miserable time with the Philadelphia Flyers. So, yeah, if you're looking for Flyers recaps, definitely look for here. Definitely. And if you are a new viewer to the channel, well, not new viewer, a current viewer of the channel, I am grateful for you being here as always and looking to continue that down the road. Also, if you're looking for tickets to any upcoming events, concerts, sports, whatever you can think of, use the code TTP Sports down below for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek, whether that's going to a hockey game, basketball, NFL playoffs, also just baseball, whenever the hell that decides to come back. Definitely utilize the code TTP Sports down below. That's taking twenty dollars off the fees, and that twenty dollars could be utilized for what food and a beverage at an event because you know how expensive those are. Yeah, that's definitely a free twenty bucks for you right there. So definitely utilize the code TTP Sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase at SeatGeek now. So getting into the business tonight, the Flyers lose their tenth straight game again to the Columbus Blue Jackets by a score of two to one. The bright side of tonight, Jake Voracek returned. He actually played tonight coming off of the COVID protocol for the Blue Jackets, and the Flyers had a nice tribute for him. Nice for Jake Voracek. But as for the game, couldn't have been any more boring. Couldn't have sucked anymore. The, the Flyers looked like they wanted to lose their 10th straight game. The only players I can see out there on the ice that cared a little bit was Carter Hart. That was basically it. Like, I don't want to knock G and everything, but basically this entire team right now is just full of losers. That's it. That is it. Like, seriously, losing 10 straight games twice in a season. Like, how much longer? Like, can you wait to do anything at this point? Make a decision. Make a decision on what the path you want to go down. Because at this point, you playoffs. We're talking about playoffs here? No. <laughs> You're not making the playoffs. <laughs> make a decision. Trade off some pieces. But, you know, the only thing that's worse about this, it's only fucking January. And the trade deadline is not until the midway of March. We got a whole another two months until the goddamn trade deadline. And this is how many how many times we've lost 10 straight games. Oh, who knows how many more 10 straight losing streaks we're going to get by that time. Man. Laughing stock at this point. The laughing stock in the league. Like, granted, yeah, you could call oh, the Arizona Coyotes, the Buffalo Sabres. Oh, laughing stock's the lead. N name a team that loses 10 straight games twice in a season. When they were had expectations to be good. When they had expectations to be better. When they revamped an entire roster to, you know, not have the same shit happen. But you know what? The same shit fucking happened with this Flyers team. Because you know why? This roster, this culture, this organization. It's not built to win. It just isn't. And something needs to change. Like, I constantly go on the fence of whether... If you want to do a full-on blow-it-up rebuild, which probably isn't going to happen, or the other option where you could probably retool once again. I know that people hate that term, retool, because Hextall used that term so much. But retool is basically the other option. Maybe you revamp the front office, you get some new scouts in, get some new GMs, an assistant GM, maybe a new president. You know, to keep Comcast out of the, you know, the game time decisions, the, the hockey decisions, and just so they're there at the right to checks because Comcast ain't going anywhere anytime soon, folks. It just isn't happening. Something's got to change. 
it's really getting ridiculous at this point to be a fan of this franchise. It's getting ridiculous because I am embarrassed. I am embarrassed as a person who covers this team. I am embarrassed as a person who is a fan of this franchise. Everyone that is a Flyers fan should be fucking embarrassed. Seriously, there is a whole section next to me at the arena dedicated to just putting brown bags over their heads. And I'm like, good for them. Good for them because I have no idea how they got those in because, you know, you know the, the freaking business side of this team trying to, you know, hide everything out of this. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can, I can go on a longer rant about this because, honestly, I prefer to go on a rant because this game just really nothing happened. This was the most boring of boring games that you could describe. Two bad teams playing a bad hockey game. Play, both two bad teams playing a br bad brand of hockey. It's that bad. And both goaltenders were basically the uh, stars of the show because both goaltenders were great in this game. Elvis Merce-Lincolns and Carter Hart. Sadly, Merce-Lincolns was just a little bit better. But it's not, it's not to blame on Carter Hart because the team in front of him played like hot goddamn garbage. I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I just don't. Because it's the same shit you say every recap. It's the same shit we say every time on Twitter. And it's just at the point, when is something going to happen? Like, I, this entire thing, like, you really can't blame on the coaching staff again. It's the players. It's the players. It's the way the teams run. It's the culture of the team. It's everything. Like, we can't just go by, you know, the coaches, the coaches, the coaches. Keep bringing in new coaches. See how they're going to revamp this roster up with that. Like, a new system, all this stuff. It's not going to work. It's not going to work with this group of players. It just isn't. All these players collectively, as a group, it just doesn't work. Even though I've been on the record saying I do think there are salvageable pieces on this roster, the entire thing together just doesn't work. Because this team, as, a, as an organization, what prospects besides, you know, Cam York and maybe Jaeger Zamula that you can say is going to come up and be something for this franchise? You don't, because there is no one down in Lehigh Valley. You know, you could say Wade Allison, but is Wade Allison going to be the savior of the franchise? No. Is Tyson Forrester going to be the savior of the franchise? No. Are all these other guys that hexed all, you know, missed draft picks and all that crap going to save this franchise? No way in hell. They have no one down in the organization depth-wise, prospect-wise, that you could have any hope for besides maybe only two, three players. And that is not that much. Like Cam York, Jaeger, Zamula, like, yeah, they're like, what forwards do we have that you can say is going to be something? Really none. Really none at this point because we don't know. We don't know. And that's what sucks about this because we really don't have anything down there. Because of, one, failed dra drafting, failed prospect development, failed player development, and basically E all of the above. I know I just skipped D right there, but basically you can just go to E all of the above. Go to E, F, G, whatever the hell, hell you want. Basically all of the above of every reason that you can think is wrong with this Flyers organization. It is wrong. Like coaching players, like pe players failing to meet their expectations, play like players not coming to play every night. Like seriously, at this point, literally every game you see, this game start the team starts off slow. They're slow to get into the game. They don't get into the game until halfway through the first period, until the second period. That's a culture problem. That is a culture problem. And something needs to be fixed. And I don't know what the fuck you do. Because I don't trust this organization to make those decisions. Because we went through it with Hextall. We thought it was going to be better. He promised us, oh, that in three to five years, maybe down the line, this is going to be a team that's built to win Stanley Cups. Because we're building up from the defenseman up. We're building up from Nats. You know, top six defensemen later and two way forwards later. Where the fuck are we? Nowhere. We're right back to fucking square one when Hextall came in here. And honestly, it's probably worse. Because everything this team touches turns to shit. Every time something goes bad, they falter. Because this organization can't handle a single ounce of adversity. They cannot. This group of players, this organization, this coaching staff, the entire goddamn team can't handle 
one ounce of it. They can't. They can't. And it's just... It's frustrating. It really is. Because I'm, I'm not even going to go over the game at this point. Well, what are we, like, almost fully way through a video at this point? And I have not talked about the game because that's how bad the game was. This organization is majorly flawed. Like, looking at the way the team is right now, their record, they're 13, 19, and 8, 34 points. And if you look at, honestly, look at their schedule. Look at the, like, even going to the past 10 game losing streak in December, in November. The past 26, what, 26 games. 26. And that, it, the, like, that 26 games is starting when the first losing streak started on November 18th. 26 games have been played since November 18th. And the Flyers have gone 6 and 20. 6 and 20 in their last 26 games. 20 of those losses have been two separate 10 game losing streaks. What does that tell you? This team is bad. This team is run terribly. This organization is fundamentally flawed. And something at some point has to give. It just does. Because I am tired of coming in front of this camera. I'm sure you're tired of being a fan of this team right now. I'm tired of coming into this front of this camera and having to complain about every single thing. I really am. Because at this point, we're only in fucking January. Because we had fucking expectations this year to be better. We revamped an entire roster so that same shit that happened last year and years previous wouldn't happen again. But you know what? The same shit happened. It did. What does that tell you? It's a bad culture. It is. It is a bad, bad culture. And... I don't know how you fixed it. The only way to fix it, trade pieces at the trade deadline. Get rid of your UFAs. Revamp something. Because at this point, the only players that I see that is salvageable on this roster, Carter Hart, Joel Therabee, Ivan Provorov, and maybe Cam Atkinson. That's it. Cam York I'm not going to throw in there just because he's barely played and nothing's going to happen with him. So basically, like, full-time players on the roster right now because I don't consider Cam York that. But maybe you can throw him to Cam York. You never know. Anyone else? They can go. They can go. Claude Giroux, at, at this point, like, you can say, like, he's going to be traded no matter what. It would be stupid not to trade him at this point on, on the haul that you can get for him. Ristolainen, trade him. Get the haul back because teams will give up something for Ristolainen. Trade your UFA is Braun. All the other guys that are on cheap contracts, play, teams will take those. Look to the offseason. Trade some of these other guys. Make some hockey trades. Trade Sandheim. Find a way to get rid of Konechny. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Because you're stuck with some of these other contracts. You know, like, so you're going to have to like you know beg a team to take JVR's contract. You're not moving Kadoria. You're not moving Hayes. You're not going to be able to move Ryan Ellis. Hell, you might not even be able to move Cam Atkinson. Work with what you got. Find a way. Find a way. Because at this point, it's it's not working anymore. And I'm tired of going through this goddamn roller coaster every single goddamn year. I really am. Because when was the last time that I, we've seen a actual consistently good hockey team? The early 2010s? The transfer going into the 2010s? Ever since then, it's been shit. Besides that 1920 season, and you, I guess at that point you could say the team was playing above their heads. But at least that was fun hockey to watch. At least we actually got to enjoy something then. Sadly, it ended in the bubble. And they just haven't recovered since. I'm defeated. I'm defeated as a fan. I am. And I'm sure everyone else is too. I'm sure a lot of people are fed up. That attendant down at the Wells Fargo Center. Getting patched here and patched here every night. It is. <sighs> I don't have anything else to say. I don't. So, I think at that point, it's time to end the video, everyone. So, what are your thoughts on this Flyers team so far? I know I didn't go over the game, but at this point, the game doesn't matter. They lost. It was a, it was a bad game. So, 
leave those comments down in the comment section below on what the hell do you think this franchise you do how terrible horrified you are as a fan everything leave those comments in the comment section down below don't forget to drop a like on this video don't forget to check out the pain alliance which i'm a part of their links are down in the description below also don't forget to check out the links to broads media the florida pod merch website and also flyers nitty gritty all that good stuff is down in the description below definitely don't forget to check those out like i said at the beginning of the video the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button and also use the code ttp sports for 20 dollars off your first purchase at SeatGeek, and i will see you next time